Let's talk in this video about Curator, what makes it so special. We're going to talk about Risk Manager and also uh, Big Data. But let's talk about uh, the basics of Curator. Any SIEM these days has a correlation engine that can receive events or logs from uh, multiple sources and this correlation engine produces uh, cases. People call it incident, we call it offenses. But what's the problem with most uh, SIEMs out there, if not everyone? Well, the number one problem is that uh, it takes forever to deploy. It requires an army small army of uh, people with PhD on the tool rather than just knowing basic IP lingo and you need to throw more appliances, more money, more services to whatever you want to do. So if you have infinite money then a solution like this might be good enough. Uh, the other problem that these solutions have is uh, they, they produce a heck of a lot of false positives. And so sometimes alert you for things that are not important and they desensitize you. And the reason why they produce so many false positives is they lack context. And we'll see what that means uh, in a minute. Third point is that in spite of uh, producing a lot of uh, false positives, they miss a lot of important things. And again, that has to do with the lack of context. Fourth and most relevant problem these days is that how can I use my SIEM to detect uh, things like uh, advanced persistence threats, which are patient events that move laterally of, you know, they, they want to get you type of people. How do I detect those with an SIEM? How do I detect uh, fraud? Uh, disgruntled employees, you know, collecting information little by little and then all of a sudden, bang, they, they launch their big attack when they get, when they leave the organization. So, what, what curator does dramatically different is from the very beginning Curator has been processing information that we call flows and the first example of those flows is what is called typically net flows, uh, networking flows uh, from Cisco or J flows from Juniper in today's uh, standard is IP fix so this is layer 4 type of data that is like when a network you know an, an element of a network talks to another uh, what uh, uh, which IP do they use what port what protocol you know that type of information so this is information that is very interesting because it never lies because this is the actual network doing that stuff and you cannot hide it you can suppress some logs uh, from here uh, but on the network, this you cannot hide because this is actually what makes the communication happen. Curator from the beginning has been fantastic in collecting this information. We also collect not only layer uh, 4 data, but also layer 7 data. And that we call it Qflow. And in that we recognize application signatures. So we look at the uh, content of the package of the payload and we look for the signatures and that's how we can identify for example the botnet talking to, a, uh, to another this is a piece of email, this is DNS, you know, this is uh, you know, different type of uh, traffic. But we also collect another type of flow which is B-flow. You see when you do virtualization on the, the hypervisor most of the networking uh, visibility that you have gets hidden inside the hypervisor and the B-flows bring that data into it. So we feel all that data into uh, Curator's uh, correlation engine. But we don't stop there. Another big component is asset information. What do we mean by that? Well, Curator, because it's so good at the way it looks at the network traffic, it can automatically detect uh, things like uh, uh, all sort of devices when they communicate on the network. So for example, if we see a DNS server, we recognize that as such. Well, that might be a, a DNS server, an FTP server, uh, a mail server, 
uh, DHCP, etc. So we know how to recognize all those. So not only you as an operator of the of the when you are deploying this, you don't have to define this. We discovered that for you, and that's what we don't take. One of the reasons why we don't take forever. But this also allows you to provide context. So if we see an IP sending a bunch of mail, and it's not a mail server, hmm, we might say, well, this might be a machine that has been compromised and is sending spam. But if it's a mail server, it might be just a, a, a marketing campaign. So that type of context. We also get context for things like vulnerability scanners. So all sort of uh, in our own and very many other uh, vulnerability scanners, we take the information and this provides a context. For example, if we see a type of attack on um, port 445 and it's a type of uh, a configured type of attack and that machine hasn't been patched for that type of attack, well, that, that, you know, that, that makes the offense more relevant. Uh, that type of context but we also because we, we we take data from active directory and and very many other systems so we see when when a user logs in so we don't just provide ip information we say uh, mike evans uh, was the one using this particular ip address when this particular uh, uh, event happened and we know the mac address because we also listen to the acp and things like that but we also can do things basic things like for example if we see somebody log in as an admin in in, in a server and, and it's browsing the internet, well, we may want to flag that and say, well, mister, it's not good for you to do that. A server should not be used for uh, browsing the net because it can easily be compromised. We take information from IPSs and IDSs, not only IBMs, uh, but, but also all, all, all the uh, main IPSs uh, in the market out there. We also feed, this is very important, IP reputation. We, we, we have one of the largest if not the second largest IP reputation database in the whole world. So when an IP is behaving bad, guess what? We get to know about it. And we feed that information into our correlation engine. So if we see a particular event coming from an IP that has a particular reputation, well, we may flag that. But we also, if we are inspecting social type of data, uh, social media type of data, and, well, we have those things cataloged and we know this particular IP address is used for sending uh, email campaign. This is for uh, tweeters or this type of social media or that. So we, we feed that information and that provides additional context. We also take data from all the elements like endpoint managers, like big fix. And uh, for example, in the case of Big Fix, all the vulnerabilities that Big Fix detects, well, guess what? We feed those uh, into uh, Curator. So, so again, if we know of a particular attack on an endpoint that is vulnerable to that particular attack, we may flag that information as, as relevant. Same thing with Guardian, our fantastic uh, technology for protecting databases. Not only we have reports that reports all the information on Guardian, but anything that Guardian finds, it tells a, a, a curator about it. So again, that provides very significant context. Same thing with AppScan. When AppScan detects that you have a code, in a web application or any kind of other application that is vulnerable to some sort of SQL injection, for example, well, we, we take our correlation engine. So if we see an attempt of doing SQL injection on a, on a particular application who we know it is vulnerable about it, well, that brings a context to raise that uh, information. So it's not going to be a false positive, but it's going to be something that you need to uh, watch for. We also take data from the mainframe. Being this uh, IBM, you may expect that we, we take it and we take it in, in a smart way. It's not that we dump S tons of SMF record and overload uh, your, your IP. No, in, in the mainframe with C-Secure, we can configure all the things that you want to be told about when happen on a mainframe on a very selective way. So we take all that asset information and we feed that into our correlation engine. And that, we you know, reduces the false positive and avoids uh, 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 evading a lot. But there's more to it. What if you ask the question and say, am I susceptible to, for example, let's say SNMP attack? SNMP attack. Well, how would you answer that? Well, the only way is for you to look at how your devices are configured. You need to get feed configuration information. Well, enter risk manager. 
Risk Manager is, a, is an optional component of Curator that basically gets firewall and other networking information, other network devices uh, configuration information, rather, and feed that information into Curator and allows Curator to do not only topology information, so you can see things in a graphical way, but also you can do simulation and say, well, you know, let me see my vulnerabilities. Let's see how a particular type of attack may propagate into my entity. So this another this is another enhancement of the uh, Curator uh, family of product. But I mentioned before advanced persistence threat and fraud, and uh, well, Curator no doubt is a fantastic technology as we have seen for this all this we can label as structured data you know that dns net flows and all, all that data is structured by nature that data is hot this is hot data this is stuff that is happening real time okay so you, you're analyzing those things as they are happening and you are reacting to it uh, as we said it's fantastic it's five for doing behavior analytics and why well one of the things that Curator does particularly well is it is capable of working with the, it's a sophisticated technology that works with two uh, sliding windows one is a 24-hour window and another one is a seven-day window uh, and allows you to create a baseline of what is normal uh, on your network so it, it is very easy to say well this user normally does this amount of data all of the sudden he's sending more data than usual he's logging at different hours all that we automatically collect as behavior and, and analytics we have spoken enough about uh, all the type of end flows and asset database that we feed into the data and, and we can collect data in, in the order of terabytes so no doubt this is the best tool in the market for your SOC but APTs and fraud again you cannot detect that for, for, for collecting APT and fraud the one thing that we need to understand is that you can call that data warm because it's not real time or actually I think it's better to be called data this is historic this is something that you are not doing real time this is something that you are doing after the fact this is an analysis that you can detect you know well this happened and then let me see if that same thing happened over the last three months oh look at this you know it's actually happening every day so if somebody's trying to attempt to log in and he's not doing many attempts on the same days because he's patient so he's trying two attempts per day but he's been doing that for all, all the days in the last three months well that you, you don't get in the hot data that's on the warm data so uh, so for that we we combine curator with the big insight technology in IBM which is the the Hadoop the big data implementation of, of uh, in our product and what we do is that we feed all these good data that curator has but we don't feed it in the raw format what we do is that we feed that data structured data we feed it already tagged so we are not saying IP this, IP that. No, no, we are saying Mr. Evans, Mike Evans is using this particular protocol and that particular time. You know, we, we, we correlate all that and, and we pass that information very nicely tagged to the big insight. And we can combine that with unstructured data. Like, well, all sort of uh, social media data. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Very important is email. Who is emailing information to what? What's the content of that email? What is the person doing? You know, all that stuff. So this this amount of data, no, no wonder it's called uh, big data, is in the order of the petabytes. You're not going to store that in your in your uh, hot appliances. And this is the tool, not for the SOC, but for a security. Let me call that uh, a hunter, for lack of a better term. Or, or in some companies, these are people, these are big, big salary people that are called data analysts. 
These are people that, you know, can look at trends in data with tools like Big Insight, but they don't have the security knowledge. Well, Curator provides that data nicely tagged for them to actually uh, make sense out of it. And, and as a result of that analysis, not only you can detect bad behavior, but you can actually go ahead and feed that, uh, that data in the form of, for example, new watch list for people that I want to closely monitor. So I think that these people might be behind something. They're sending e emails of these. The content of the email says that. Well, these people might be preparing an attack. And, uh, and yeah, so they might be preparing to leave the organization and I'm taking a bunch of data with them. So let's monitor them closely to make sure that that is the case. And so you can create custom rules into Curator that will monitor that. So in a sense, you are automating that type of analysis and that now is going to happen real time and now it's going to alert you about about things happening but also this te this technology can be used in combination with another uh, uh, IBM technology called i2 i2 is a fantastic tool that is, is particularly good for visualization of uh, of trends and data so with with i2 you can do things like detect uh, who is connected To who? Who connects to who via email, via social media, via etc. Who is related to what? Because these attacks are organized. These attacks, these APT or these fraud attacks are not uh, the typically a single individual, but people are connected and are organized in order to uh, get uh, something important from your company. And, and this is called, this who connect to who is what is in I2 is called association analysis and provides very nice graphics of how people are related. But also you can do things like incident timelines. Yeah, so, so for example, in the case of fraud, you can see, well, uh, Pete sent, sent uh, money to uh, John, who in turn sent money to Robert, and, you know, we see the timeline where those things are happening, so that's how they're doing money laundering. Uh, so in the same thing, well, uh, this, this guy uh, is, is, is doing this type of uh, scanning, then he goes into a site with his... Uh, contacting people that sells tools for automating attacks into into company but you know all those uh, uh, all those, those type of tools uh, uh, and, and we see the, the the timeline where those incidents are are happening and also it has geospatial analysis and and you can do incidents in a map and you can see you know might be logically well all these people are based in uh, you know Belarus or uh, East Africa or whatever and they, 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 this is the uh, the connection that we see in the people and, and you can use all that data the, 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 the data analysts can use all that visualization to actually analyze after the fact all those things and again provides customized rules for curator to for that process automate that detection that is the next step on uh, Curator.